You hear me? Okay, well, welcome everyone. This is the Neon One Annual Fund Webinar, Three Annual Giving Myths Debunked. Uh, just to let everyone know, a little bit of webinar housekeeping today. The uh, recording will be recorded. It'll be posted on YouTube and I shared uh, via email to everyone who's attending today. Now to take a look at our agenda, first I'll give it some introduction to myself. My name is Ryan Roberts, one of the account executives with NEON. We'll also go through really what are the objectives of that annual fund. We'll go through uh, one, two, and three myths. Uh, we'll recap kind of some of the things that we discussed and I'll walk through a quick uh, product demonstration kind of relating to uh, the topics information that we bring up today. Well, first of all, introduction of myself. My name is Ryan Roberts. Uh, glad to uh, meet all of you out there. Uh, I've been with Neon for a while now as a, a nonprofit sales consultant. And really my experience comes from just being a member of a nonprofit called Operation Smile, really enjoying that experience in high school through college, uh, once moving here to Chicago, participating with Catholic Charities, and even be able to start my own uh, chapter of an organization that raised money for uh, childhood leukemia. So I've uh, really been on uh, kind of both sides and not only understanding the real benefits and rewards of working in the nonprofit and association space, uh, but understanding uh, kind of the uh, difficulties and seeing how technology can definitely be a benefit there. Well, let's talk about our annual fund uh, objectives. And before we get to the myths and facts about annual funding, let's really level set and start with the basics. Your organization's annual fund is the foundation that allows you to support uh, the other more uh, sp product specific campaigns that you run throughout the year. Um, so for some of the examples are, you might in the spring have a 5K run to raise money to buy items for maybe a park or beach cleanup, or maybe you have a specific fall appeal for clothing donations. Uh, now that winter is uh, kind of on the horizon. Now, uh, an annual giving campaign should have two main goals, supporting your nonprofit's operational expenses through unrestricted funds and forming stronger donor relationships. That first goal, raising money to cover operating expenses, is really, really the first thing that comes to mind when discussing annual funds. Because it is simple, it's easy to measure, and it's directly tied to financials. The second one, the donor re retention piece, can sometimes fall by the wayside, but it's just as important as the amount of funds raised. If the first goal allows you to sustain your current operations, the second one is what sets you up for growth. It does this because it's really mission focused. Uh, being, uh, the more focused, uh, the greater goal of your organization. And as we look, you know, starting now through the new year, um, this annual fund is the time to focus on how you can improve your quest toward that mission. Uh, start with the goals of your annual fund, not just a monetary goal, but really why do these goals exist in the first place? Um, annual funds also have that ability to really promote donor retention. Um, fundraising oftentimes falls in two categories. Transactional fundraising really emphasizes the transaction itself, focusing on encouraging the donor to make a donation, and this can sometimes lead to donor attrition. Now, more relational fundraising, this emphasizes the relationship between the donor and the nonprofit. It focuses on building a relationship with each individual donor. This leads to donor retention and uh, continued and ideally increased donations over time. A private, properly executed annual fund can lead to more relational fundraising. Uh, one tip here is to, and it sounds like a simple one, but really thank your donors immediately. You should be thanking your donors the moment they hit submit on your donation forms, and the more automated you can make your donation processing response, uh, the less time you'll spend doing paperwork to catch up. Also, the more personalized the donation uh, thank you can be, the greater the chance that you'll stand out from the crowd. Uh, the annual fund also promotes donor upgrading. Uh, your annual uh, fund should never be treated as a one-off donation, but as a way to continually engage the folks that most engage with your mission. Uh, segment out the most active donors and sometimes really specifically appeal to them. Take the time to make that communication um, really targeted to those incoming donations. Really focus on leveraging your technology and finding ways to make your donors give more regularly and automatically. Now, with that said, let's talk about some of the myths that we run into. Now, myth number one, 
only large uh, long-standing organizations can run annual giving campaigns. And really, this couldn't be further from the truth. Organizations of all sizes can run successful annual giving campaigns. Although annual funds require significant time and resources, the size of the campaign will always be proportionate to the needs of the organization. Even if you only have a team of two fundraisers, you don't need a bunch of expertly designed ads or a viral social media moment. All you need to do is remind your donors why they enjoy giving to your organization. Um, so first of all, let's talk about smaller organizations um, who don't have to the solicit as many don't have many donors to solicit by virtue of just being smaller or even just being a newer organization. So if you are kind of new to annual uh, fund planning, think of it with longevity in mind and building a base plan that can be repurposed year after year. Start with the year's goal, then break that into quarterly and monthly goals. Work backwards from the conclusion of campaign up to the launch. And really Think to shift your focus from what the big guys are doing to what you have the bandwidth to do. And whatever you do, make sure you have an excellent donor stewardship strategy in place. Um, take the opportunity to really construct a SWOT, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, analysis of your organization's overarching goals and objectives involving all your major uh, stakeholders, including your staff, board members, volunteers, and the folks directly by your work. And finally, write that plan down. Make sure it's not a plan that sits on a shelf, but a dynamic document that is revisited quarterly. Once your strategy is created and agreed on as a team, um, you're ready to start the real work. And uh, kind of as a reminder here, um, I'll be going through a number of different topics, but if you do have questions, don't forget to submit these questions into the question box and the, uh, the prompt. Now on the myth two. A myth too is that donors only give once, and if they do donate to your annual campaign, they may not donate to crucial project-focused campaigns later on. So, but the reality is, uh, donors really give when they're moved to give. When done tactfully, there's no reason your annual fund campaign will make raising funds for more specific uh, fundraising campaign goals more difficult. What's most important here is really the messaging. When planning your campaign, take the time to dive into the value of propositions. For your annual fund, this is where you'll explain that this is an opportunity for donors to support the entire of your organization and your ongoing work and your big overarching mission. Focus on creating a connection between your organization's brand and your donors. Uh, your annual fund and your campaign-specific fundraising initiatives are developed with two entirely different purposes and purposes in mind. Kind of lean into that and drill down your messages to highlight the importance of both. Uh, to do this, you can create emails and mailings that are targeted specifically to how donors identify with your organization. Consider segmenting based off how much they donate, when they donate, how many times a year, maybe even their first engagement with your organization, uh, like events or other important factors. Um, the more you can speak to your donors, uh, your donors as act individual people, the more impact your message will have. And if your supporters trust your organization and are moved by your cause, your donors will give and give again throughout the year. Uh, take the opportunity to really recruit heavily involved volunteers or annual fund committee members to write a letter on why they invested so much of their time and energy and talent towards your organization. Um, sure up major donor support by bringing in your most influential board member, sometimes it's not the president, and having them make personal appeals. And talk about what the funds uh, go toward. Share a story of how the impact of a donation, uh, what a donation can make. Take the time to celebrate your heroes, be it donors, people you serve, instead of just focusing on your organization's accomplishments, which also helps too. But really, the idea is to motivate and inspire your donors um, to bore them with stats and achievements. This is truly a time to create a call to action. Okay, on to our uh, final myth. Annual fund campaigns shouldn't be focused on soliciting individual donors, um, maybe just the big guys. But again, that's really a myth for us. Uh, annual fund campaigns are all about individual donors. Uh, not only are individuals the easiest to form personal relationships with, uh, but they are also the most valuable type of donors for nonprofits. They might 
give less upfront, but this is about the long run contributions made by individual, uh, all about the long run. Uh, contributions made by individual donors on average make up about 70% of your overall fund raise. Plus, individuals are more likely to give on a reoccurring basis. Uh, contributions made by individual donors will make up about 20, 70% of your overall fund raised. And so over the lifetime, that's, that's going to be a, a bigger chunk of where your dollars are coming from. And um, listen, we all know that while any donation to your annual fund is an affirmation of the work you do, um, we do understand there's a special joy that fundraisers receive when those big checks do come in. But remember, all donors should be treated with a baseline of respect and stewardship. And if done correctly, this will lead to more consistent giving and donor upgrading. Now, while they may give less upfront, uh, fundraising is really a, a long game. And what we mean by that is uh, individual donors are more likely to give on a reoccurring basis. And so make sure that you are constantly reaching out to them. Um, your annual fund activities combined with your CRM tools uh, can be used together I gather more information on the individual donors you pull in and ideally tighten those relationships. I get as much data out as from them as possible. And the single thing that your organization can do in regards to individual donors is not only collect that data, but use it to properly gauge your ask. You really should be levering your technology to turn every constituent engagement into an opportunity to learn more about your donors and why they care about your mission. So to recap, first of all, plan for what's attainable for smaller and newer organizations. If you're new to annual fund planning, think with longevity in mind and build a base plan that can be repurposed year after year. Um, start with this year's goal and break that into quarterly and monthly goals. Uh, work backward from the conclusion of the campaign up through the launch. Now, if you have more experience with an annual fund, take a critical lens to the plan you used last year. Is it accomplishing your goals? What worked or didn't work? Um, to really take the time and apply uh, insight from your SWOT analysis to see how you can tweak your current plan for better results as you move into the new year. Focus on your tailored messaging. Uh, this is an opportunity to include stories about your year of success within your mission. Uh, again, maybe not just statistics of what your organization has done as far as bringing in dollars, but really find some real stories. Here you can involve the heroes and stars of your organization and include them within your messaging for a more personalized appeal. Um, you really want to show uh, the human side of your organization, and that's gonna really just uh, appeal to the giving capabilities of your donors. And finally, uh, don't discount your individual donors. Uh, individual donors are in the prime position to become your regular donors. Um, there's a growing amount of research that shows that donors, specifically uh, these millennials, are turning toward reoccurring gifts on a timeline comfortable to them. Make sure that your donors know that this is an option perhaps by creating a special appeal aimed at encouraging reoccurring giving or adding a reoccurring giving option on all solicitation materials and donation forms. Again, leverage your technology to make this easier on your constituents. All right, so um, that's kind of the big picture of what we have to kind of talk about today. Um, as a reminder, uh, be able to, you're able to uh, ask some questions of us in the question bar and we'll get to those at the end. Um, but I want to kind of take a quick spin through uh, Neon CRM and show you some ways that you can use the tool uh, as a part of a stepping stone to really maximizing your annual fund. All right, so we're sitting within the Neon Serum Mission Control Dashboard. Uh, this is kind of the first place for us to take a real big snapshot of what we have going on within uh, the organization. We see our, our pledges, things that uh, pledges some uh, dollars due and maybe uh, behind, uh, so we can actually reach out to those uh, pledges coming our way. Um, 
uh, this is an opportunity for us to, oh, kick me out, here we go. All right. With this uh, nice report running for us here in Neon, I know exactly who I need to reach out to. Um, I've got them engaged through that pledge, uh, through that past pledge conversation, but here's a way for us to make sure those dollars are coming in by having that uh, uh, report run for us on a regular basis. I've got my key performance indicators, understanding kind of where we are as an organization. This is where we can start the point towards that SWOT analysis. Uh, we're doing well in the green, we're doing not so well in the red. Um, these are our strengths, some of our weaknesses. This is how where we can start developing that stronger plan for the future. If you're an organization with some experience in your annual fundraising, this is how we can start looking to the future and improving on some of these steps we've taken in the past. Now, let's take the opportunity to learn a little bit more about one of our donors here. So one of the first things that I mentioned was um, find a way to really segment out your donors. And with NEON, you've got a really easy way to do that with those individual types. Uh, within NEON, we are able to create uh, unlimited amount of individual as uh, individual and organization types, which really are the first segmentation piece of the people that we're working with. Uh, in our example here, in our fictional nonprofit, we have our Barry, who's a board member, he's a major donor, he's a VIP, and he's a volunteer. Um, this could be the first step in the way that we start to segment out our donors and send specific appeal to them. Um, the next way that we're able to do that within NEON is within our custom fields. Uh, these are typically fields that you would create as an organization to really segment out uh, people based on their interest or other metrics that you would use. For example, uh, uh, with through a through an online form, we can know when people are available to volunteer. Um, but we can also know um, for our nature organization what favorite owl, uh, what's their favorite owl. We can include that in the communication. Um, if it's a particular, if you are an alumni association, keeping track of what graduation year someone has, um, that could be a way to appeal to a particular people of a particular time period. Um, also, it's nice to. Uh, segment our donors by how much they give or how we've ranked them within their giving capacity, you can actually create a custom field with the NEON to track that information. Um, if it's a transaction or uh, data in the custom field, we can run a report on it. And finally, you've, uh, again, you, you've got unlimited space here to make custom fields uh, designed to pull any type of information that's important for you um, from your donors. This can either be gathered through direct conversations um, or it can be uh, much more easily uh, brought into the tool through some of our online forms. Here are some examples. Uh, first of all, uh, a donation form is a great opportunity for you to um, ask some questions about what are your donors most engaged with. Uh, this is Challenge uh, Aspen, and pretty basic, put in a dollar amount up top, give them the capability right away to make it a one-time or reoccurring donation, um, perhaps even create a, uh, a status level for those who donate regularly throughout the year. That can be run in the report. Um, below that, we have a custom field. And when selecting an item out of this custom field, this information, once submitted, gets pulled into the NEON system, sits on the back of that person's account, and can therefore be uh, reported on and then communicated and tracked um, very easily within the system. Another way to take a look at this is a Mississippi School for Mathematics and Science Foundation. Uh, they just they straight ask, you know, when person make a donation, you know, how are they related to this organization? Um, so they can easily segment their alumni, parents, uh, and, and so on. Um, those people are going to have uh, similar but somewhat different feelings about uh, MSMS, and they want to make sure they communicate specifically um, to that relationship. Um, they also give the ability to uh, to really direct those dollars towards either an, uh, an either a you know total annual fund or a general giving uh, general giving uh, pool or 
collected by each particular fund that they're running. And so by tracking these appeals, you can learn a little bit more about why uh, individuals are, are giving to you. Another place where NEON makes this uh, easy uh, for us to really identify what's going on with our donors is in a, our workflows. There's some excellent tools here. Uh, one of the things that is kind of tough about running an organization and knowing when all the checks or online payments are is that some of your donors have given a lot to you throughout the years, but you may not have been able to really calculate what that, what that dollar amount is or it might not you know, uh, come to your attention if it doesn't come in the big check uh, format. This is where using workflows to track those donations uh, can be a huge benefit for you. For example, we have a conditional trigger for our major donor share. So this means over time, um, if uh, you can create this threshold, whatever it may be for your organization, but a lot, even those small donations can add up over time. So we want to create a condition where we start to recognize that. Next, we make it, uh, we give an opportunity for once this condition uh, has been met, we get one of our individuals to maybe call, give a handwritten letter and thanking for that person for becoming a major donor over time and their, with their history of dona uh, donations. Um, but also, we're gonna have that system automatically update individual type. So what this means is, although one big check did not make them a major donor, uh, number of smaller checks have. We want to make sure that our system recognizes this individual as a major donor, but our communications recognize this person as a major donor, and our invitation to events also recognize this person this way. And a nice little touch here, which I always like, is that um, let's just reach out to them. Uh, a nice human touch, maybe 45 days later, um, just to make them uh, feel real nice and warm and fuzzy ab about engaging with our organization. Another workflow that I think is important for us to kind of consider when we're talking about our annual funds is once we do get those people on those uh, regular payments or we do get those individuals kind of engaged with pledges, um, let's make sure those dollars come in. So I know that's, uh, I talk with a lot of uh, uh, customers out there and they're always interested in, uh, they're always interested in uh, how do we maintain uh, pledge dollars coming in. Uh, so we created a workflow for that. And so one of the things that we can do here with the NEON is um, create a triggering event. And what is that? When, when those pledges are due. And if we know that our pledge amount is greater, uh, due amount is greater than zero, we know that that pledge has not been, uh, has not been fulfilled. And so we've got a couple of things that we can do for you. First of all, we can do some basic and easy. We can send out an email uh, just kind of nudging our pledgers uh, to get those dollars to us. By using tokens here, basically a list of customizable uh, information uh, that pulls from that person's account, we can ask specifically to their name, um, what that pledge amount is due, um, what that particular date is, and we can thank them. If it's a large enough dollar amount or if that person, we can make a condition where this is a major donor, perhaps this person deserves a phone call. Now, we've got a lot of flexibility within these tools here to really not only customize our response to people, but really make sure that none of our annual fund giving and asking activities kind of slip through the cracks. And finally, reporting. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to really just pull a like, pull who and what um, and how someone relates to us um, from um, all this information we've collected from people from those donations, from those events, and how they've come to us through NEON. Um, first, I always like to let you know that um, through NEON, we've got dozens and dozens of reports kind of pre-built for you based upon the different activities that uh, people may have within your organization, and that's just uh, sitting and waiting for you when you come into the system. But you've got also the capability to customize report based on whatever type of information or type of person that you may lo be looking for. So for your, uh, for your annual fund example, you might be looking for a picture type of person. So let's reach out to our individual donors, individual uh, people versus organizations, but let's go with, you know, I want to speak to our board members. I want to speak to our board members. I want to speak to our major donors. I want to speak to our VIPs. 
because that conversation might be a little bit different than when you're reaching out to your students or your volunteers or maybe the parents of your organization. Um, perhaps you want to even, uh, uh, maybe you want to even divvy up that group of people a little bit more. So maybe you're looking at that total donation amount greater than or equal to, let's say maybe $5,000 over time, okay? But the last piece might be maybe not just segmenting out, um, uh, might not be segmenting out what this person has done, but let's say, you know, maybe there's particular activity that they've gone to that was important to the organization. We want to make sure that these people have um, engaged in that. So let's, let's look at a particular event that they've gone to in the past that was really important for them, right? We can, we can look for that event, or maybe we want to only look for rid of this. Maybe you want to have another characteristic of, uh, opportunity for them. So let's see, on our nature organization, we only want to talk to people with a certain favorite owl because these are the people that we want to appeal to specifically. You know, however, uh, however people have raised their hand and told you what they're interested in the organization, be it by a campaign that they've given to or a topic that they want to know more about, you can use our NEON online forms to gather that information, use our reporting function to search for those people with that information. Finally, when we're looking to uh, run the report, We've got their name, maybe move their email up there. Again, I'm looking for favorite owl. So I went to, when I talk to them, look at that favorite owl there. There we go. Is they run this report. I've got this big list of people here. Now this is pretty long. Um, I might have a long, I may have some free time on my hands as a development director and I could actually reach out to these people, shoot them an email, actually use this report here um, to create an email audience, send it to our uh, campaign email, uh, attach it to a specific email and uh, uh, raise, raise awareness to our annual fund and schedule and send that out. Make it really easy, easily that way. Um, however, I want to connect with the uh, connect, however I want to connect with the specific groups of people in my organization uh, using the custom fields within our online web forms and within the uh, account pages to really start segmenting out people by their interest uh, and activities. Use a reporting function to kind of segment them again, so I can target my specific either outreach by telephone, email, or other other functions. And that's really it. So now that we're done the demo, Q&A time. Uh, I want to take the opportunity here to kind of dive into some questions that may have come up for you. All right, just looking through the questions here now. All right, just having a little trouble with the question panel here. There we go, I got it. All right. All right, so one thing I learned from another webinar is put, put thank you page to work. Is there a way to personalize Neon thank you pages when someone donates or registers for an event? Um, absolutely. Um, each of our pages will have what, each of those pages will have those uh, uh, tokens available to it. So it'll always reach out to the person's, uh, it'll, it'll actually be able to say that person's name. You can thank them for their donation amount. You can even uh, specifically refer to that uh, campaign that they are uh, giving to. So uh, 
All right. So how do I talk to my boss about segmentation? I think that's a pretty good question. And I think it really comes down to what are the, uh, what are the major uh, what are the major type of uh, individuals in your organization? Is it, you know, is it uh, major, is it major donors? Is it people who donate for certain events? Is there a certain type of, uh, how, how are people engaging and find out, is there some different flavors of that engagement? And that's the first way to kind of uh, determine the, the types of individuals we're working with. If you're more event focused, what type of events are people doing? If it's more kind of volunteering, um, are there specific type of uh, events or volunteering um, opportunities that you have that really uh, appeal to certain people? That's going to be a great way to start that segmenting conversation. Are we able to add multiple donors to Neon at the same time? Uh, yes, if you were doing uh, using our uh, you, you could actually uh, you can actually do uh, adding do donors through either um, doing one check or you can do a mass a number of checks at one time. I can If an organization is both new to NEON and creating an ask for an annual fund, what steps do you think are essential in setting it up successfully? Um, that's a great question. I think the most important thing with the annual fund is really communicating what that particular, what your overall mission is for your donors and creating a effective donation page, which t will communicate that, for, uh, will communicate that message. And, and that's going to be a way for you to just e easily connect, uh, easy connect your that giving to your mission. And so, um, either having, if you're like, particularly if you're new to Neon, working with your uh, professional uh, consultant there and putting your uh, web pages together, it could be a very good uh, benefit to you. Oh, here's a great question. What is a good time of year to start uh, an annual fund? Well, um, it really, it might be in relationship to your fiscal year for the or, uh, for your organization. Um, but um, something to really think about is that a really large amount of donations um, come in towards the end of the year. You know, uh, winter holiday season is a big ask time of the year. And so if you want to kind of ride the wave of that to really front load your annual giving, Think about having things start in October so that you're a couple months into it when December rolls around. Sure. No. Uh, just a reminder: we will be recording all this and sending this out, uh, sending it out to everyone. Right. Uh, another question: Can we build in actions after a form submission? Uh, so yes, uh, you can actually use workflows. You have to just use workflows so that when a particular uh, the condition could be a uh, a volunteer page comes in for a certain particular project that can shoot off an email to either your maybe your volunteer director or a certain person within your organization, and they could uh, specifically uh, reach out to whoever that applicant is. Maybe it's a special project that requires some level of uh, knowledge or skills, and you want to make sure a conversation is had. That can also kick off an email, maybe to schedule that appointment to the person who completed that volunteer form. Um, workflows are going to be a great way to accomplish a lot of that. So I've got a question here. Can you show a little bit more how the, uh, how the events uh, are connected to the individual profiles? Uh, no problem at all. So one of the things that's going to be really nice about Neon 
is that you're going to see someone's complete history and engagement with your organization through transactions in a couple different ways. First of all, you'll have uh, up front your timeline, uh, basically historical representation of donations, uh, uh, emails, and just all that engagement with that person. However, we also chop things up with an account section area, meaning that we can, uh, for events, we can see all of their event registrations there. So if you look into someone's account, you'll know specifically what activities that they've uh, they've engaged with in the past and, and how often. At the same time, you can also run reports under events. Or not necessarily run a report, but I can run to I can pull up an event that we've either have coming up or sitting in the past, and just look, look through the attendee list and see who's engaging in those events as well. Let's see, uh, how do you think you guess work? I think it's a pretty good question to ask and uh, that's gonna be a, a pretty uh, easy uh, answer. Um, this is gonna be something in line with, if on a, a donation page, maybe this one's a little bit better. Um, if you have a custom field that particularly, you know, asks uh, for your donation, maybe there's a field, uh, if you're for your donation, you get to receive a gift, you know, maybe a hat or a, tote bag those are really popular um, that'll just pull into uh, that'll that'll pull into your your CRM you'll be able to run a report on people who have clicked that particular box and make sure that you send out those materials to them the material history will also sit once you send it out that material history could sit within the person's account as well I've got a question here about Eventbrite Another good one. Let's just go to the uh, dashboard page. Uh, we do have a number of certified integrations with some excellent third-party vendors, one of them being uh, Eventbrite. And so what we're able to do is if you are using Eventbrite, um, that data will be collected um, through uh, that app. And we've got a two-way push of information between uh, the systems so that we're able to, here's an event we have, uh, with Eventbrite, um, we had to push uh, back and forth uh, the attendees, their account, and all that registration information. Okay, here's a question about the end of the year appeal versus uh, annual campaign versus Giving Tuesday. Um, kind of, you've got a lot of different uh, masters there. Which one do we, uh, which one do we uh, serve? And I think that it's important to understand that. Uh, these all kind of relate to each other, all uh, all relate to each other, but at the same time, you can really focus on things a little bit differently. So I would uh, one one opportunity for you to do is look at your hysterical giving patterns within your CRM and determine who gave to these activities previously and be able to, to then be able to kind of communicate to them. Um, for an annual campaign, you've got the ability to uh, perhaps look at people who haven't given in a while and really remind them of why they gave in the past. You know, you can run a report on people who donated some year, but unfortunately not this year, and kind of focus some efforts on um, bringing them back into the fold. And end of year giving, is, it's going to kind of follow suit as you're starting that, uh, that end of year uh, kind of appeal. But those would be kind of some uh, tool, some tools and suggestions I would use to kind of start uh, approaching those different needs that you have. So 
So I've got a question here about the uh, MailChimp integration with Neon for uh, thank yous and individual follow-up follow-ups. So uh, you you can definitely use uh, if you wanted to use Mailchimp, we do have an integration with that to uh, kick out thank yous, um, uh, uh, your thank you emails. Um, but we also do have a automatic transactional uh, thank you email through through Neon uh, built in. Just kind of show you what that looks like. We've got a number of different options within our communications that are that could be set up for you. So we have a, a few different thank yous here within our donation appreciation area. We've got a few different versions really focused on how people are giving. For example, uh, uh, we have a major gift threshold so that that major gift appreciation is going to be a little bit different. It's going to look and feel. Again, we've got the tokens in here for the major gift, kind of thanking them for those dollars and being that receipt. Um, but we also have a capital campaign uh, version. This is going to be a little bit more focused on the building we're trying to build in our fictional nonprofit here. Your annual or Giving Tuesday campaign it's going to be uh, formatted a little bit differently, maybe some pictures and stylization um, based upon what that particular ask is. And it's important for people to feel that you're thanking them for those specific asks. I got a question here. Are segmentation options mostly custom fields? Uh, they're actually going to come in a number of different ways. Again, you can either create the individual types, have a variety of them, and set, use those for segmentation for your report. Custom fields help as well. But also, uh, it's not just custom fields. You can also segment out uh, your uh, your donors or really your constituents by other things they engage with in your organization. So if you're just looking for people who maybe came to your gala last summer, that is a segmentation option. That's not necessarily going to sit in a custom field. That's going to be more of a uh, active engagement. Hmm. And again, the question, can you use more than one system for thank you emails? If, if you wanted to use both, you could. Um, you would have, I basically, how do I assign uh, each email to the type of donation made? This, I don't want to get too much into the woods of the uh, function of the system here, because that's, um, but that's really just creating a new email condition and deciding what that uh, condition is going to be. Individual type, uh, particular campaign, um, donation type over a certain type, any, uh, basically any type and any reporting tool within the system is going to help you differentiate, differentiate uh, the type of uh, conditions and therefore thank yous that you can create for your donors.
All right. Well, looks like that's all the questions that we have today. I hope I'll be able to answer uh, the questions that we received. Is there anything else? Uh, we'll actually be reaching out to you uh, as an organization. Again, um, this recording and video will be available uh, either uh, online in a couple different places. Uh, we're recording it for uh, YouTube, and there will also be a, a email follow-up from us. But again, if there's any other questions, you can reach out directly to Neon. I want to thank everyone for their patience, and uh, good luck with all of your annual giving activities. Have a good afternoon.